What is gain staging? Gain staging is the way in which a signal is amplified as it passes through different points in its signal chain. Whether you're recording with microphones, using virtual instruments, mixing a track, mixing a band on stage, or using plugins or hardware processing, getting the gain staging correct is a key component in obtaining the best sound quality. Now, I've seen some seriously incorrect discussions of gain staging out there on the web, so let's take a closer look. We'll begin by defining a few essential terms. The first is gain. I've seen gain defined as the input level on a device or a processor, but I think many of us think of gain as the amount of amplification being applied to a signal. And unity gain means that the signal level coming out is the same as the signal level going in. Another essential term to define is noise, which is unwanted sound in a signal, such as hiss or hum. And there's also signal to noise. Now this is a ratio or a balance of signal, desired signal, to the noise. Headroom is the difference between the nominal or normal operating level of a device and the onset of clipping or distortion. So with that said, let's get back to gain staging. And this is the process of setting the gain for each amplification stage in a signal path. And that might include the preamp or input gain, input and output levels on a plug-in or processor, the fader on a mixer, and so on. There are a lot of places where amplification or gain can be adjusted in an audio rig, and the key is to optimize each of those stages for best sonic performance. So we have three goals with gain staging. The first is to maximize signal to noise. This means keeping the noise to a minimum while getting a strong, clear signal. We do this by ensuring we have a solid signal level early on in the signal path. Turning a signal down later in the signal path will also reduce the noise at the same time, while turning a signal up later will tend to bring the noise up as well. Second, we want to prevent clipping or overload at any gain or summing stage. We do this by maintaining plenty of headroom and not trying to max out the signal level at any given stage. Third, with mixers, we want to keep the fader right around unity gain or at the zero point, which allows for maximum control. So gain staging is really a balancing act across a lot of different points in the signal path. And in general, if you have one stage cranked way up and have to turn another stage way down, something probably isn't set right. Now the most important stage to set correctly is the input gain stage, whether you're using a standalone preamp, the preamp in a console or an audio interface, the playback level of an audio file or a virtual instrument or from a track. And in the analog days, we used to try to set this as hot as possible to minimize tape hiss and other analog noise. These days, we're concerned with getting decent levels into converters and getting playback to a good level while still allowing for plenty of headroom. I like to set the average level for the signal somewhere around 10 to 18 dB down from zero. This gives me a strong signal, but allows for plenty of headroom. With today's systems, there's plenty of resolution available and noise is less of an issue, so keeping the average level in that minus 10 to minus 18 dB range gives great sound quality while allowing for plenty of headroom for peaks, transients, and dynamics, and it also allows plenty of headrooms so you can add EQ or other processing later without fear of clipping. As far as faders, I generally will start with my fader down about 6 dB from zero, so at minus 6 dB. This way, I'm still in the sweet spot for fader resolution. Remember, faders are logarithmic, not linear, so it's best to keep them in that area right around zero where they're most responsive. By setting it minus 6 dB, this also means I have room to turn a channel up a bit if need be, and I'm not slamming the output bus too hard. Now, I'll set that output bus fader at zero, and I'll never change it. If you find yourself tempted to turn down the master fader to prevent clipping, then your gain staging earlier in the process is messed up somewhere. Likewise, I have a predetermined monitor level that I like to work at, and I never change that. By keeping the output bus and the monitors at a fixed level, I'm never tempted to turn a channel up to get the volume going, and I allow for plenty of headroom for summing. Now, speaking of summing, I recommend not maxing out the level in the stereo output bus. I like to leave plenty of headroom here so that processing and EQ can be applied during mastering. So I try to keep the average stereo bus level somewhere in the minus 6 to minus 10 dB range. Another key place for gain staging is plugins and hardware processors. Most plugins have an input level control and an output level control. I try to set these so that the level coming out of the plugin is the same when it's engaged and when it's bypassed. Now, there are, of course, exceptions where I'm using a plugin to boost a signal or something, but as a starting point, I try for unity gain when bypassed and engaged. And again, it all comes down to balancing all those gain stages for best audio performance, least noise, least distortion, and easy mixing. Go for a strong signal level with plenty of headroom, and try to set things up so you can comfortably mix with the faders, generally pulling faders down instead of boosting, which will help maintain headroom, minimize noise, and give you the best summing performance. And one final note, you might be tempted to think that with floating point digital mixers, as we find in many DAWs these days, we don't have to worry about headroom as much. I mean, theoretically, floating point math does provide tons of headroom. 
But I find out here in the real world that maintaining solid gain staging throughout a signal path results in the best sound quality regardless of what method of summing you're using. If you're interested in learning more concepts like this, visit us at the Sweetwater.com news and research page and check out the other videos in this playlist.